available everywhere pod hello everyone and welcome back to the gsmc fantasy sports podcast i really hope you enjoyed that spain team preview i really think they are one of the teams to watch definitely in terms of fantasy as the knockout stages progress if they get there in the first place but coming up now in the fourth segment of today's show is a portugal team i'm really high on they are my personal dark horse in this tournament they have some of the best technical quality in the world and ultimately one of still one of the best players in world football right now in cristiano ronaldo uh trigger warning there all the lights are flashing in your minds when i mention that name so without further ado we are going to get right into this portuguese side who i'm really very high on now portugal has been a has been a side who recently has had some success they won euro 2016 with a much worse team in my opinion and now they're quickly becoming one of Europe's most fantastically interesting teams to watch, one of the most fun, enjoyable, on-the-eye kind of football they've been playing in the past. Only team in Euros qualifying to have a 100% record, conceded only two goals. That's how strong they are from top to bottom, and I'm really happy that I'm able to preview them before they start their campaign, because they are going to be one of the teams to watch in this tournament. In my personal sleeper pick to at least to make the finals if not win it all so let's kick this right off obviously we're talking portugal you may have heard of this guy cristiano ronaldo enough said there cristiano ronaldo valued at 10 million still kind of pricey and for how old he is right now uh, even though that might not even matter it is kind of pricey but when you look at the history he's had in this competition you just have to swing for the fences with him, especially if you're someone who's really ambitious in how you set up your attack. Just go for him. The highest ever goal score in Euros history, the second highest score in qualifying this year, and the best international goal scorer of all time. I'm just going to leave those stats up there, and you make of them what you will. Honestly, as someone who has had painful experience with Cristiano Ronaldo as a German football fan, and what he's done with Real Madrid and Juventus to Bayern Munich. I can't personally love Cristiano Ronaldo, but in a fantasy situation, I especially could because of the fact you know he's going to score goals, especially in a squad around him that is the best Portugal has had in many a year. And let's just start off with Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes is obviously a very fantastic domestic campaign player, but in a Manchester United squad that has really struggled, his talents aren't necessarily fully realized but an international portugal jersey chris uh bruno fernandez is one of the best midfielders on the international stage he is just a fantastic asset and his connection and partnership with cristiano ronaldo is really scary to behold when they get going bruno fernandez we know the intelligence and creativity he has domestically it might not be as fully well-rounded as in portugal because he doesn't necessarily have the attacking talent that Portugal has on the squad, but Bruno Fernandes becomes a different animal in a Portugal squad. And at nine million, I'm gonna take him in my squad. I would take him if I were you in my squad. Seven assists in qualifying just go to show his fantastic level of distribution. And ultimately he's a no brainer in my opinion if him and Cristiano Ronaldo are hot to start off. And then a player in Bernardo Silva, who I really, really love. He doesn't necessarily come across as a huge goal-scoring threat. He's not a huge player. He obviously is very much a system player. Just fits so well into different systems. Not necessarily getting all the plaudits he deserves at Man City. But on a Portugal squad that has so much technical quality, he is the cream of the crop. Bernardo Silva is going to be one of those wingers who cuts inside, tries to find space to unleash a shot or get it into the box for guys like Cristiano Ronaldo. And so Bernardo Silva, if you're looking for someone who is just so versatile in how he plays, so interchangeable in the dynamics in the squad, Bernardo Silva is your guy. And I think he's a very low price for you guys, a cheaper option in your attack. So... Be, be wary of uh, taking a flyer on him because he could pay dividends for you. Now let's kind of go to 
that defense because the defense is one of their strong suits as well. They aren't just known for Cristiano Ronaldo. They are known for their potency in defense. And it all starts with Ruben Dish. Ruben Dish in the past couple of years has truly transformed himself into one of, if not the best center backs in world football. Just a fantastically physical style of playing the game in that Manchester City defense. One of the stalwarts of how they play and how they set up and what has made them so dangerous to score against in recent years. And so, slotting into a Portuguese side, like, like I said, has conceded very few goals in their qualifying. It's going to be a scary proposition trying to dribble past Ruben Dias In terms of ball recoveries, in terms of interceptions, he's going to rack up fantasy points quickly. And he definitely is a no-brainer, in my opinion, if you're considering center backs. Now let's switch to the fullback position, where a guy like Joao Cancelo can really get going as well. He is one of the best attacking fullbacks in the world, obviously. He has bounced around a couple of places in terms of domestic club football. But right now, at home in Portugal, he is one of the best players in the squad. He is certainly someone that you kind of have to account for outside of guys like Bernardo Silva and obviously Cristiano Ronaldo because of his ability to push high up the pitch, get crosses into the box, and even score from outside the box. He is a defender who I really like if you're looking for someone who can score that long-range effort because he definitely is willing to let one be unleashed should he be in that kind of high up area in the pitch around the penalty box. So Joao Cancelo is certainly one to watch in this tournament in terms of the fullback position. Let's go back to this attack and a player who I don't necessarily have on this screen right now. I don't necessarily really think will have as great of a Euros as I want him to. In Joao Felix at 8.5 million Euros, he's kind of like Alvaro Morata for Portugal. He definitely likes long-range shots, but he certainly is a flyer who I definitely wouldn't take at that price, at least in the group stage. Maybe in the knockout stages, as Portugal progresses to the tournament, he could be valuable as someone who's an impact substitute for you off your bench. But Joao Felix is definitely one of the most controversial attacking players in the world. When he was younger, coming up with the Benfica ranks, one of the most coveted talent, young stars in the world. But right now, he's just bounced between teams. His whole contract situation surrounding him domestically is just a mess. And it could transfer over to the international side of things. So when I look at this team that has just so much quality at every single position, I honestly don't see where Joao Felix fits into it. I do think that should he get a couple of minutes... I would be intrigued to see how he uses those minutes because of the fact he does have that potential in him. He's still one of the preeminent players on this team. There are certainly guys on the bench in terms of attacking quality, guys like Pedro Neto, Goncalo Ramos, Diogo Jota, who I think will get more minutes than a guy in Joao Felix, who I'm really kind of disappointed in and not willing to take a risk on and someone who I would just overall shy away on if you were looking at attacking players for your squad. But it's the last final diagnosis of this Portugal squad. Like I said, they truly are going to be one of the most enjoyable teams to watch at this tournament. Not exactly true dark horses as they definitely have the quality to go all the way and they have Mr. Cristiano Ronaldo CR7 in their squad. But they certainly have this kind of air about them that says, I'm here to stay. They're a hungry team. Potentially, this could be Cristiano Ronaldo's last tournament, so look for him to kind of come in with a vengeance and want to do well for his country in potentially his last tournament, so we'll see how he plays. But I'm really excited about this Portugal squad. I'm really, really excited about them. They have so much technical quality. It's my favorite players in world football. And just seeing how this team interchanges with each other, the dynamics they create on the pitch from top to bottom, the way they play their football, just so attractive in terms of their brand and style. I think it ultimately comes down to not the players, but the manager. Roberto Martinez, no matter how well he has played throughout qualifying as their new manager, he has been much maligned for not necessarily finishing the job. Obviously, 
with Belgium in their golden generation, he kind of failed to deliver any major trophies for them. And so, coming to a Portugal side that has seen success in the European Championships in the past, he's, the, the pressure is definitely going to be on him to kind of give these players a certain freedom because they know that they can do it again. And it's ultimately going to be up to how they set up and how Roberto Martinez manages these talented group of players. It certainly is one of the most talented groups he's ever had. And so, ultimately, I think that Portugal can make the final, maybe even the semi-final, but that's a lot of pressure on them, especially in a tournament where there are a lot of different uh, underdogs and different storylines that could emerge from there. But that will just about do it for this Portuguese Euros Team Fantasy Preview. Last but not least on today's show, coming up next for our final segment, we're going to be previewing Di Aronja, the Netherlands, one of the even more dynamic defenses in this tournament. Should be a very interesting segment because of how well-structured this Netherlands side is. We'll be right back to finish out the show with them. <laughs> 